have just acquired another 20 boards, uh, which we are using to line the walls of our cargo trailer. Um, about 25% of what we need, more or less based on how good we, or smart we are with the cutting. Um, the boards come from Gorman Lumber, which is a company that operates out of British Columbia, and they're very environmentally friendly. They use every single part of the tree, including the bark, sawdust, etc. Um, so we can appreciate that gift. Every part gets used. Um, the other nice thing about Gorman's is that they slow kiln dry their lumber, so it maintains a nice flat evenness that you don't get with the fast drying products. Um, so what I do, you can see that they have a nice smooth finish just coming out of the mill because of the way they press them. However, um, because we're going to live in a tight space, good chance of breaking it, brushing up against the wall, catching clothing or skin or whatever. We want to make sure it's perfectly smooth and get rid of some of the flaws. By flaws, I mean these are natural things that occur in the wood. For instance, we have here a knot. If you can see the knot. And um, so that's not smooth and I'll be using some filler to to fill in these spaces. And then, not very often, but sometimes, there's a major flaw, like here, where we have to fill in, and we'll do part of that during the assembly process, after we join two boards together, because we need enough space for the wood filler to um, adhere. So, the first step that I take, is to sand these boards down using number 60 sandpaper and I leave some of the sawdust so that I can combine it with the wood filler and have a better chance of the wood taking the stain. And we'll show you a little bit more of that process shortly. All right, so I have taken some sandpaper to one of the boards and I have an unsanded one here so you can see sort of the difference in the color. The reason for the difference in the color is because when they're planing this out and forming it, the heat from the machinery pulls up the resin, which interferes with the um, staining process. So I took some uh, number 60 sandpaper and removed all that so we have a nice clean finish. Um, and that's a good place to start, um, but let me get rid of this one so we can zoom in here and I can show you what exactly there is that I want to be doing today. Uh, of course, you could skip that step of sanding away the resin if you're going to paint it, but we really like the wood grains and we're going to keep it and stain it, so it was sort of necessary. Um, I'm going to do just this patch here so you can see how we patch. Um, I don't usually do this inside, but I don't know, my videographer asking him to get up at 5 a.m., which is when I'm outside trying to beat the heat, maybe, maybe he appreciates not doing that. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe he misses the sun rises and wishes to get up and do that, uh, but I don't think so. Okay, so here you can see there's there's a number of um, knots, but and those will get just a little touch up, but here is a very deep running um, ding, which is with a small knot that I, I need to fix. So Here's the knot that I'm going to repair, um, and I'm going to pick up the rest of it in the morning, but so you could see how this works. We'll concentrate on this one. Um, what I use to fill it is the Elmer's 
uh, color changing wood filler, which is stainable. It's important if you're going to stain something that your filler is also stainable. Um, and I like that it's color changing because you see it's this purple hue and when I put that into the gap here, press it down with um, trowel, small trowel, it goes on purple and then we'll need to wait about 15 minutes to uh, let it dry enough to sand. All right, you can see the change in the color now. It's no longer purple, it's brown, which tells us that it's dry enough to sand. And I sand um, the filler as well as the rest of the board with number 120 sandpaper because that's as far up as you want to go to not close off pores while you're staining. Okay, so basically we're just running this along here. And what I like to do is look closely at the board because you don't want any excess stain to interfere with the grain that's already there. Now you're gonna notice the part where the filler is in the holes because you, you can't create grain, but, so see, I'm losing a little grain here, so I'm just gonna sand just a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a nice, smooth, even coat that we'll be able to stain all the excessive uh, wood fillers away from the grain. And we just have the hole filled now and you cannot even pretty much notice it there. So now we're ready for the staining process. Now I'll take the rest of these boards out and uh, do the, the other little knots that are here. Um, and fill them in the morning when it's a little cooler. I don't want to make a big mess in my kitchen. Um, but hand sanding is kind of nice. You can relax and reflect on things like uh, uh, how the creator of the entire world became incarnate and then lived the early part of his life as a carpenter. And so as you're sanding, you can think about that. Um, or, or anything really that appeals to you. It's a nice, quiet, non-mentally challenged activity that uh, is worthwhile in the end. All right, so we'll talk about staining next. Okay, so if you're living in a small space, light color is important uh, because it makes you feel like you have more room. And so we wanted to pick a lighter color. Uh, and I didn't want to get any more toxins in the environment than we needed to. A little bit of research and I found out if you can mix vinegar with rust and a little bit of salt, you can create a natural state. So I tried that with a mason jar, some rusty pieces, let it hang out for a while and tested it on a sample board. And this is the sample board and if you can see the difference between the bare wood and the sample color here, you see that it turns out to a pretty nice, sort of a warmish red hue. Um, so that's what we're gonna aim for, but I have nearly 400 square feet of uh, surface area that I need to deal with. So I need a lot bigger batch than a mason jar. Luckily, uh, we have these cake pans, which we used for 11 years as starters for plants. And you can see they've gotten pretty rusty. In fact, they're pretty much not worthwhile anymore, except for they're going to be awesome for this purpose that we're going to use it for. So we're going to leave the vinegar in these pans for three to four days. So it can pick up the rust color and then we can return it to the jar 
and have hopefully three gallons worth of stain to cover our 400 square foot of woodwork. All right, so how do we do this? Well, in this case, what I'm gonna do is pour half a gallon into each pan. I'm eyeballing this because it doesn't have to be exact. All right, and then what I will do, is add a little bit of salt, it just helps bring out and pull up the rest. And then we'll, from time to time, swish that around. Maybe every two or three hours. And that's the start. We'll pick up in a minute after three or four days when this has all gotten fermented and ready to be a stain. And then we'll put it back in the plastic bottles. Good recycling of products. All right, so we'll see how it goes. Once Melody's done the initial sanding and filling in the imperfections, I bring four of the boards out onto the front porch, glue them up, just using um, the transparent wood glue, which makes staining so much easier. Betty seeps out. I just run a little down the grooves, stick them together, put four clamps on with barely any pressure. I don't want to mess up the tongue of the grooves. And the way I've set it up is I put stop blocks at each end so I have nice even edges when I'm done. Uh, I just think doing four at a time, maybe five, would be better. I just don't have clamps wide enough that when it comes to putting them up on the walls in the cargo trailer I'd rather do panels of four than just individual ones time after time plus I think it's going to cut down a lot less um, the cargo trailer is seven foot high these boards are eight foot so I'll make one cut use one cut cut through four boards instead of four cuts for one individual board. And then when I get done here, it goes off to Melody again for uh, additional sanding, staining, finishing. All right, welcome back. It's been a few weeks and we have sanded and filled the wood and re-sanded 56 boards. Um, which gives us enough to go from the V to where the bed starts. Um, and we are going to prep to stain. So before we stained, uh, I think when we left off, we were getting the stain ready. And I wanted to film removing it and doing all that, but when I got up early, the trays had decided to disintegrate, so I had to quick react and get that processed and lost about a pint of the mixture. Um, but basically you just pour it through a strainer and then I put it back into one of the vinegar bottles. Um, so very important before you do anything is to test an area. So I had a piece of the sample wood that um, I had put the Elmer's on and you can see the color of the stain is really nice. Uh, it's a nice deep color, but if you look at the wood here, you can see that the Elmer's didn't take the, the vinegar rust stain very well. Um, so, and it's a lot darker than I hoped it would be. So the next thing I tried was to take another sample and just go ahead and do the sealer. And here you can see on this, there's no noticeable um, colorations from the uh, wood filler. So we're going to go with that. And you can see that that adds a nice warm yellow hue. So that's the color we're gonna work with. Now, how we make our sealer 
is basically going to be three parts canola oil. So I will have a cup here of canola oil or three thirds, right? And then one third a cup of vinegar. And you can just use your regular, you know, household cleaning vinegar or cheap salad vinegar. So we put those two together and apply them with a brush. I stir each time because, you know, oil and vinegar, they don't like to conjoin. So brush it on, give it a good coverage for the full length of the board. All right, so we've covered the entire board with the oil and vinegar mixture. And then after it's set, just a minute or two, go ahead and wipe off the excess with, this is a t-shirt rag, but I think any rag can do um, to reveal your finish. Now that'll take about an hour to two hours to dry, and then you can work with the board as much as you like for installation. Um, we just prepped all of the boards before we started, so we were good to go. When I say prepped all the boards, we did all the boards up to where the bed starts. The reason for that, once we took the panels, the uh, particle board panels off of the trailer walls, we measured out the distance from wall to wall from the metal frames, which was 81 inches in width. And we're hoping to put in a queen bed. We're gonna need 80 inches. These boards here, you can see from the sample, these boards are um, 11 16th inch wide. So if you put two of them together, you have an inch and three eighths, which is three eighths too much. So the solution is to use this five eighth inch board, which we're going to be using on the ceiling and treating it the same way as we did our wall panelings. Um, but that will give us, um, when we put two of them together, um, five eighths, that gives us three sixteenths on either side of the bed for putting in your fitted sheets and tucking things in. So hopefully that will work out. And just a heads up for what we chose for that are mm, these boards from Pine Ridge that we got from... Uh, Home Depot, and we'll talk more about these as we install them, um, but there'll be a link below so you can see where to find these. Well, now that Melody got done all that she's doing to get the um, tongue groove lumber ready to go up, it's my turn to start working on putting up the walls. And the first thing I did, I came up to all the seams Yes, the manufacturer did um, put caulking in there, but once I get these walls up, I never want them to take them off again. So every place there was a seam, I ran it down to the floor to keep water from coming in. And then when we get to the bottom, I also did caulking around there. And that wasn't so much for water, but more for keep ants and other little critters out. So next thing will be putting some fern strips up where the mini split is and then start installing walls. Well, it may have taken over a year, but finally have the interior walls and ceilings up and completed. Uh, plenty of mistakes along the way, but Tell you the truth, I think it looks awfully darn good. Uh, so just give you a little walk around. Right here is the tradition 
uh, transition from the thicker um, boards to the thinner and this is where the bed starts and we needed that little extra width to get the um, queen size bed to fit um, for the windows what I did was go into a corner here and it's not perfect I may put some filler in there but I took a router three quarters of an inch um, boards which is leaving too much of a gap between the trim and the frame and it didn't look attractive so what I did is I took a router to the three quarter pin inches uh, pieces got them down to about a quarter inch and it made that frame fit in so much nicer and drew up the window so much tighter that that was a good move um, on this wall over here speaking of mistakes I didn't do that and it really looked bad so I tore off all those boards and redid it using the routing method and I was kind of lucky on this window here it's where the bed is the quarter inch thick boards fit in really nice so I didn't have to do any routing on that so that's what it looks like and then the ceiling I put in puck lights um, it's probably not showing up in good on the video but the ones on the right are warm the ones on the left are coal light and that's the mini split um, and it's far too much lighting than you need in here but it's all controlled mostly well not all but mostly controlled on this wall here where uh, the cold lights are above the kitchen the warm lights are what would be called in the living room area um, so it's just more comfortable lighting we like cold lights for when we're working and warmer lights when you're just sitting around relaxing and if I can get kind of a shot here um, that's the first interior wall that has the refrigerator and then going down um, below the refrigerator I'll see if I can get a shot here uh, that's all the electronics the batteries are stored under there and then we have I think um, that's an original piece of art that my wife painted and then we can open this up and we have more storage plus yeah all the electrical wiring is actually up there and I'm going to put a board in to protect it so storage up there won't be a problem and there's the distribution panel um, this is another <laughs> this is where I first started at the front and I made so many holes trying to get the boards attached to the metal studs that it looked awful so I ripped it all off and then what I did was start putting furring strips across the metal studs I should have taken a picture of that um, and then actually attack well you can see one up here there's a furring strip I needed this gap for running the 110 because all the wiring is behind the walls and there's going to be a cabinet going here but that's the type furring strips I put up and that way I could just attach the walls to the furring strips that were attached to the metal studs so that worked out pretty well it gave a much cleaner look so that part's done and next on the list, um, just going back and trying not to hit my head on the door. That area up there is going to be the toilet, a wardrobe beside it, the kitchen starting over there with the two outlets. 
And those wires you see hanging there are DC lines. One for an interior water pump for the kitchen. One for an exterior water pump for the shower. So that's the way it looks. I think it looks pretty clean. I'm actually very satisfied with it. Got a little more to do back here. But we're going to be enclosing the back. And I want to do that before I finish up the walls. So, that's how she looks. Really darn happy with it. Okay, as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe. Um, I'll keep posting videos as we make progress. Hit that like button. Any comments you have, you know, take note, and before I forget, um, we didn't do the stain. The panels are just sealed with oil. But all that stain you saw my wife mixing up earlier, we are going to use. But we're going to use that. We got maple lumber for the countertops. And she's going to stain that uh, with the stain she mixed up, which will give a nice contrast. Uh, comments. Always love to see comments below. So, well, have yourself a blessed day.